buds and shit. Right. Yeah, we hear you good. Hey, cool. what's up, everybody? I'm Ryan. I'm joined by my co-host, my co-host, one half of the best dressed team in grappling commentary, Alan Villacorta. And Bill, the girl Cooper, is here. Wait, not Jeff Glover. You know, he's, he's running on Brazilian time. So we'll get started with uh, our boy Bill here. How's it going, man? What's up? How's things, how's things been? It's been good. It's been good. Um, try, you know, getting the training, I try to squeeze the training in wherever I can, really. Uh, I mean, the only place I can. <laughs> I got my little spot. Uh, but it's been good. Um, making it happen, you know. Right on, man. That's good to hear. So, uh, so what's what's plans? Uh, what's plans going to be like uh, come post Corona? Are you trying to are you trying to get to back back in like Rocky Four shape and make a run oh, yeah. in front of all these young bucks? We'll get oh yeah. Back. Hey, look, Jeff's coming in right now. We'll get him at it in. Oh, there Let's we see. go. What's up, dude? Sick. Welcome, welcome to the party. How's it going? Hey guys, sorry I'm late. <laughs> No worries, no worries. Of course, he's outside. I knew it. <laughs> All right, dog. I'll, 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 I was busy working on some shit. What, what's good, y'all? What's good, oh, man? Hey, that's my cousin. The, that's my cousin. Hey, I'm just doing some manly <laughs> shit. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's near the grill. Yeah, always near, right. the, always near a grill. That's right. I gotta be I build a grill out without building a grill in my life right now. I gotta be like barbecues around. Barbecue grills, any kind of Paul Wall grills, any kind of grill. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so what's up, Jeff? How's it been going, man? How's things? Uh, how's things for you on the on the on this deal? What's your how, affected you too much? I mean, how how are you dealing with it? No, I'm doing well, boys. I'm doing well, man. I'm in uh, I'm in I'm in uh, a safe place. The CIA doesn't know where I'm at right now. This place is. Uh, oh shit! I have uh, tin foil around my bedroom. Me too. Yeah, I got, I got it around my uh, my cell phone too. I actually yeah. sleep with a tin foil blanket, so <laughs> so it all it all works out. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not social distancing, man. I feel guilty. Hey, hey, hey Bill. Be hey Bill. Uh, he's, hey, Bill, he's, this he's is going to uh, be honest. <laughs> so you're not so honest. So so, hey, I, I hope you're always honest. <laughs> you know, Jeff, right. Jeff's over here. He's over here. He's like, everyday pojada doesn't matter. Pandemic pojada doesn't matter. We're going to get it in. But, hey, that's awesome, man. I mean, people, you got to live your life. I'm not I'm not here to judge people. I mean, we decided to do things our way. I'm not going to hate on you for doing things your way. So, fuck it. Whatever. More power to you. Hey, Jeff, this is yeah. Alan. Um, I, I, I reached out to my old coach, uh, uh, PTG. So he, he, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Glover and the Greek. What's up? Yo, Pete the Greek yeah. from Mexico. You know, we actually got shut down, dude. We were in the middle of Pete the Greek. We were in the middle of Glover. Yeah, BTG knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, hey, hey, you know, quick, quick, quick by thing. The way, uh, by the way, yeah. Pete the Greek, me and BTG were doing wrist locks before you. We 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 let Pete the Greek have that one. Alan's got the wrist locks. Alan's got the wrist locks. That guy up here, I'm telling you, man, you roll with Alan them wrists. You gotta watch. Well, them. you know, well, you know, funny thing is, uh, I I trained with uh, uh, PTG was my my coach for like four years. So, um, you know, I, I trained out of Chicago. So I learned, you know, I have a lot of good stories, gym stories. So that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys. Um, what was one of the crazy? I know you guys were with Frangia, right? And so what were the craziest stories coming up in the gym? Like, you know, like at least at, at, at our gym in Chicago, we had people visiting and being choked out. I'm not going to say who choked them out. I'm just saying that people were getting choked out. So it was just crazy stuff going on. So what crazy stories you guys have from your, from your, from your gym? Um, fuck. Bill, you want to get this first one? Bill has some really good stories, man. <laughs> I know. I want. I got some uh, good uh, stories of uh, Bill. That's uh, I can only imagine. Of 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 pass people being passed out. Well, not kind of passed out, but you know, there's there's always these internal stories in the gym, right? So what I mean by that, like stuff that like maybe your coach professor does, and you're thinking like, what the fuck is this? But you know, you're you're just a student of the game, yeah. and you just watch things happen, right? Well, whether it's I in, mean, I mean, for example, like Fringia is definitely a very different. Um, coach than he used to be when he was in his like 20s and early 30s like when Bill and I were under him like pretty intensely like every day twice a day Fringy was pretty fucking mean bro like he would hit us 
You know what I'm saying? He would like, you know, he would wake us up. He would come to my house and like drag me out of bed to take me to training. Like he doesn't do shit like that anymore to the students. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we used to get a mean Frangia. Frangia used to hit Tyrone and like hit the dog. And like, he kicked me in the stomach one time because I forget what I did wrong, but I like went over in the corner and cried like a little bitch. Like, ah, Frangia kicked me. I think Bill was laughing at me and shit. <laughs> That's a funny shit. So like that shit was trauma. I was like, I'll never ever say anything mean or do it. So you oh, see, so you guys have you guys have uh, said a word. So like you and you and Bill have actually fought each other back in it. Y'all fought each other. How many times have y'all uh, competed against each other? Yeah, we had to fight each other because all all the other schleps in the division couldn't hold a candle to us. So we had to show them how to do it. Han BTG, bro. That Japanese, that ja I, I watched that match before. I just to kind of do some history, and that was like super dope. Was that the only time y'all ever had to compete against each other? We ended up closing four or five different divisions at least. Yeah, yeah. That's good but shit. that that match that 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 was a time when Bill and I were around each other like all day, dog. Like every weekend, and not not just the tournaments, dude. We were around each other like. Everything Frangia did, me and Bill were there with him doing it. And if we weren't hanging out with Frangia, we we're hanging out with each other. Like, you know, so what, what you saw was like, you know, what we were doing every day, dog. We were doing roles like that, like you saw in that match. That was like a, a B version of what we were doing every day in the gym. Man, like I see that like the kids like the William Tackett and like the Cody Steele, Andrew Tackett, the new breed coming up, scrapping in the gym like that. I mean, I, I, that's what reminded me of like the young generation coming up. Like you guys were doing that shit way back. So what was it like, like coming up, like you guys kicking everybody asses? Your yeah, that shit sucked, man. Remember, Virginia would make us slap, do open slaps, and sl and we'd fuck up like on a shot, and he'd be slapping the side of our backs and our ears. <laughs> to the lead. I was like, that was the scariest part, man. I was like, oh shit, okay. Yeah. Now, all right, man. Now we're gonna see how we use this. You know how jujitsu comes in play. I'm like, fuck, oh reality <laughs> check. <laughs> hey guys, oh, so shit. he just quick. starts slapping. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. He 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 went like Glover went first. He was the oldest. So I okay, what not to do? Hey, don't shoot. Just because <laughs> for G would just hold you in like a sprawl, and he just he just loved to slap you on the side of the ring. <laughs> Oh, Combat dude, just two before was, years, like a, was cool. a voice muffled, muffled down, down on the mat. <laughs> you know, I, I oh, had I had this great. conversation awesome. with um with Bill back at uh, 3CG. Um, you know, you guys Jack, were were, were basically the the second wave of what uh, jujitsu in the U.S. Right, the first group as far as kids coming up growing jujitsu. So it's what a lot of people call American jujitsu, right? Um, and so, Jeff, you've been a black belt, what, 13, 14 years already? I mean, um, can you give us a little bit of, you know, I know you've been in the black belt since, what, 07, 06? Yeah, 2006. Okay, and Bill around the same time or two years later. Yeah, so my thing is, um, you, you see a lot of these guys coming up from, you know, Danaher, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're being shown as uh, American Jiu-Jitsu, but you guys are really the pioneers as far as the, the, the new group, the new kids that at the time coming up. You know, um, how do you, what do you guys feel about that? You know, you see, you guys were the, pretty much the first kids coming up, growing up in jujitsu in the U.S. I feel like you guys should all send us a hundred bucks right now. Just, just on the, you know, just since we're on the topic. <laughs> all right. It's sent. So, that's it. We're sending reparations. That's what we're going to be sending that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Hey, but for real, what was it like being the two gringos tapping out all the Brazilians? Like what was that yeah. like? Like at the tournaments, I, I want to hear those stories because I've heard I've heard some wild shit. Like you guys would just go out there and tap like this big next Brazilian prospect, and then you know that the people lose their fucking minds. I want forty acres and a mule, and I want oh, free shit. college for my kids for three generations, and and um. <laughs> no, I, I think we, I think I think we can make that happen. Yeah, it was cool, dude. It was it was a special time, man. It was a special time, you know. There was a, uh, there was a lot of people um, for us to look up to and try to emulate. Um, and we actually had relatively a lot of access to it with people like Mark Lehman and Scott Nelson, mm -hmm. who were producing um, 
tapes that we could watch. VHS right. tapes is what we had. Is what I when I started jujitsu, Frangia had a library of VHS tapes that we could watch. Build and, it um, back. Frangia would rent them out. And, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because I, I started jujitsu back in 06, 05, 06, and I remember growing up. I mean, in the jujitsu scene, you guys coming up because you guys were already tearing up the scene. And at that time, you had a lot of the Lloyd Irvin kids like Mike Fowler coming up. And that was the first wave that caught my eyes. And that's what had me going through. So, you know, I, I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, you guys were the first wave. You guys are the ones who really put it out there. So um, as right a follow up. Place, right, time. Yeah, but- right place, right time, man. A lot of it was unintentional. You know what I'm saying? Well, we, what Bill and I were doing was we were trying to be like Tyrone. You know, hey, I got to kind of be like Frangia. We got a you know question from uh, from Zach Marshall. He said, what is it like rolling with Jocko? He wanted to know, Jeff. <laughs> Jocko's the man, dog. I love Jocko. It's always a pleasure to do anything with Jocko, especially like roll with him. He's a fucking G for sure. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah big time. Future president yeah. of this country, goddammit. <laughs> that that uh, good podcast video, man, that, that thing is the most motivating thing ever. Like if, I, if I'm ever feeling down, it's like, let's just go listen to some Jocko. And then you're going to be like, all right, I'll stop being a pussy. Let's get back to let's get back to work. But um, so I so Grappler's Quest, like I, I went, I was doing some research. What was that? What would you compare Grappler's Quest tournaments to now? Like, what would that be the equivalency these days? I'll, nothing, nothing, dog. So what 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 made Grappler's Quest so special? I mean, what was what was the what was the differences? Stuff that like shit that. was the wild wild west, my friend. There was no rules. <laughs> like the rules were made up on the spot half the time. Like there was no. Um, it was just so ghetto, dude. There was no like official like outfits. The referees could wear whatever they want. It was just, it was pleasantly ghetto, and it was fun and it was unique and it was very, um, what's the word? Uh, you could wear any. You could wear any gi. You could wear any. You put your tis anywhere you yeah. want. <laughs> <laughs> as long as long as you wanted, <laughs> you know they can take over the whole fucking gi. <laughs> <laughs> oh you man! You can make it where it's hard to grip. <laughs> yeah, like you could wear judo geese. Back in the day, you were you're allowed to wear like a karate gi and judo geese <laughs> in a jujitsu tournament. <laughs> yep. Oh, Brian shit. would let us oh, do a lot shit. of shit, dude. Brian Simmons. The thing about Grappler's Quest too is you would you would get to meet Brian Simmons, dog. He was walking around and talking to everybody, and you know he didn't always like please everybody and do a good job, but. I thought that was pretty cool. You could that that Brian Simmons was like down on the mats talking to people like, "Yo, a match got screwed over." Brian would come over and be like, "Oh, what can we do about this? Let me see if I can." Uh, sometimes he could work it out. Sometimes he couldn't. Or like sometimes the division would have a hole in it, and there wouldn't be a match for some some kid, and some parent would be flipping out. My kid needs a match, and Brian would come over and like handle it himself, you know. And, That's uh, dope, man. I, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And it was like it was a little more like personal. I think the Grappler's Quest. We all got to like become pretty tight with each other that whole group uh-huh. um it was it was a special time dog it was a special time for bill and, and you, i in our careers you know the cool thing is on youtube at the time there weren't a lot of events on on youtube as far as jiu-jitsu so it was all grapples quest right so i remember seeing jeff bill and then you would have bj on there and then you would have mark layman and that was pretty much it right and so um i guess i would compare it to the naga of 2010 right sort of uh, what do you guys <laughs> think so it was like a Naga. So it was more tournament based. I mean, you had super fights, obviously, right? But it was more like a like a tournament. You pay entrance fees. You, you mean the Grappler's Quest? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Grappler's Quest would have everything. Like it would have dope super fights. I think you know. I think Grappler's Quest and Naga is like the tale of the the the, the turtle versus the the rabbit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like it's like Naga. Naga always just kind of stayed pretty steady, man. And Grappler's Quest was burning so hot and so fast and having super fights and, like, 16-man divisions where everyone's getting, like, $10,000 and, like, seminars and this and that. And, 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 and was definitely outshining Naga for a long time, dog. For a long time, it was like, why would you do a boring-ass Naga tournament when you can go to Grappler's Quest and see Dean Lister fucking footlock, like, 12 dudes? You know what I'm saying? It was like... Why would you do that? So, but but then, yeah. man, then Grappler's Quest had the fall, boom, and then Grappler's Quest fell. But who's still there, dog? Naga's still there, going steady, <laughs> strong, belt. Hey, doing their thing, man. They got <laughs> Naga World Championships. Hey, so you know Jeff, I, so Jeff, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you something. So we came out with our rule set, right? First thing people said, 
Oh man, Jeff Glover did that tenor tap at. I don't know how he made that happen. Tenor, tenor tap or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I guess our uh, our old professor or my professor uh, Brandon Mullins. I'm sure you know him. He came up y'all y'all in the same. Uh, I had a match with him. That's right. Yeah, uh, in the same generation. So he was the one. He said for I my. Beat no big deal. Go ahead. Oh, oh, shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> I think I got uh, some points in the same match. <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, the tenor tap thing. Like our rules, like first to eleven or submission. So what what made you think about that? I want to hear like what made what how did you come to that kind of rule set and 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 what I mean were you seeing the same sort of exciting stuff and matches we were seeing under that type of rule set that that we see under ours? I don't know. I guess I'm just a creative guy, bro. I guess you are, bro. Maybe we should pay, we should go get you a goat and uh, a few acres of land, bro. I would. I ain't gonna complain. I'll mat that shit out, homie. <laughs> No, man, but no, the tenor tap thing was always, that's, that's like, it, 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 it blurs the best of both worlds. You got your points and you got your submission only. So you got the guys that are maybe not so savvy in submissions that still have a, a, a path to win. I don't, I don't know. It's brilliant. No, no, it's because like in wrestling, I, I heard that in wrestling matches, you can like tech ball somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's my, I was like, oh, that's like a version of a submission, isn't it? You know, it's like finish the guy off. You don't wait for the time to run out. You just finish mm -hmm. that dude. So mm -hmm. I thought like, how do we do that in jujitsu? So, you know. No, it was just one, two, one, two leads to fucking 10 or tap. So it's like first person to 10 points or submit the guy. No, that's if, awesome. I pull, if I pull guard, so there's no scramble. You don't start on the feet. It gets to the ground and nobody has a point. There will always be a point awarded. So if I pull guard on you, you get awarded a point. If, if, uh. if any time, anytime there's a bottom to the top, that's not enough submission. It's rewarded in a point. So like mount escape, like a bridge out of the mount is, is, a, is a point. For the guy on bottom that's dope yeah i like i like the rule about pulling guard about how it's a point for the other guy i really like that it's, it's smart it, it, it's from like watching the, the ebis where two dudes would just ball up on each other remember remember uh um, ps what was it pf psl oh well, if you jump guard and the guy lands on the knees and give a point yeah that's right yeah, that it one? was like in in professional do you guys do you guys know uh re uh what was the name bill rico chipperelli no I, the name yeah 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 yeah, Rico Chipparelli ran this event called PS. Uh, that was a, dope. I forgot about that. Bill. That was the one where Couture with Jacare, right? It That's was a right. long time so ago. Rules, check this out. Dude, the rules that were, was <laughs> if I could pull yeah. you down into a closed guard, I get rewarded <laughs> takedown points, dog. And I believe that was the first time. I don't know if it was pay per view, Dude, but it was the first Marcelo time like Garcia, major. Jacare, yeah. Randy could Jay Shields, Jeff Glover, Matt Ryan, right. uh, Crone Gray. Dude, it yeah. was. Supposed That's to have me right. crow that time. That's right. My bitch has got fucked up. And then they, yeah, they right. had like they had like baseball cards for each <laughs> grappler. My bitch, my bitch just got broken by crow, dude. He came over and rolled. I yeah. kept going. He, so, know, like I did some stupid thing in wrestling. I heisted like he was so strong. Dude. He gripped so strong. He just I broke my bah! broke my broke my own ass up, man. He's I unrested his train. Oh, <laughs> He's so fucking tough. a beast. Who are you talking about, Crone? <laughs> yeah. Remember when we went to roll with him? Fuck. Yeah, the one in the gi time, that was horrible. Yeah, Crone, Crone invited <laughs> me one time. When, when I was a brown belt, <laughs> Crone invited me and Bill to come do a private training session with him. Oh, and like fuck. four of his best dudes. It was fucking dope, bro. We went down. We, uh, we drove down from Santa Barbara. <laughs> we were like in two hours of traffic, dog. We showed up two hours late, bro. The, the LA traffic was so bad. And, and they were just getting started two hours late. So it's all yeah, oh, he was us, they were sitting on the mat waiting, bro. They were like, yo, we, we want to roll with this Jeff and Bill motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we were at the time we were tearing shit up, dude. Like, and we all knew each other. We were already friends with Crone. Like we had already, you know, Bill had already had that match with him. You know, so so it was like it was just a meeting of the bros. Let's have a good sesh. We're all dope players. Let's get together and have a good sesh. Mm -hmm. And and we went and trained with Crone and Bill and Crone had some dope matches that I wish could have been recorded. <laughs> I got to roll with Crone and and then um I got to roll with all of Crone's guys and then Crone asked he wanted to watch me and Bill roll with each other. He was like, I want to see you guys roll. He was Crone's cool, dog. <laughs> He's got a good <laughs> life. <laughs> what's the what's so I mean follow up on that? What's like the craziest like behind the scenes like role like person you've gotten to train with Bill? I'll let Bill take that first. Like just you one on one in the gym, no cameras, no no nothing. Who is the craziest? Has been like some of the craziest training you've had with, other than Jeff. You can't say Jeff. The cra the craziest training? Yeah, like in a room just be. Oh man, <laughs> oh fuck! In a room like what do you? Damn. Like you know what I mean? Like just like who who like. Let's see, I try to think. Uh, 
Like off the wall. The old Let's Cobra see. Kai days, Dude. man. Bill used to get down. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of. <laughs> yep, I'm probably thinking with Holdsworth or something, dude. Yeah, like all, like all the UFC guys would come in. We'd like Joe Stevenson and Spangler. Oh, and like oh Kevin Ratherman. I'd probably I'd have to see Kevin having my bunk buddy. My bunk buddy was Kevin Ratherman, dude. Was, Holy! Oh my god! How was, that, how was that training with that dude, man? The Randall man. Randall he'd, wake, he'd like wake up in the morning. Joe, that, that, that. Oh fuck, man! Bear, like all his tidy whities <laughs> big old bag of strawberry cement, like uh, a protein powder, a big old like the gulp, like you get at Seven Eleven to fill up your protein shake, and he had like a mixer too. Like, no, no, where's you at, man? You ready? And he'd be like making his protein shake, and just dude, it'd be like a sixty-two ounce protein shake. I swear. You know, it's it's probably not even yeah, mixed well. Good. You know, it's just chunks. Yeah, yeah. Like chewing, yeah. Like chewing it as it goes down, just chewing it. <laughs> Big old strawberry mark on his. <laughs> hey, rest in peace. He'd be rubbing his. Yeah, oh, yeah rest I in peace, that, man. Dude. Hey yeah. guys, quick yeah. question. So I, I I got a two part question. So uh, I want to know what, what what's up with you guys. I know, I know, uh, I know, Jeff. You got Glover and the Greek, and I want to know about that. Um, and I also want to know about uh, Bill. I want to know what's up with him. I know he's been working out with those new uh, BTG shirts. So um, first part, Jeff, uh, what what's up with uh, Glover and the Greek? What's new with that? Yeah, we were right in the middle of, of filming and uh, we were on the middle of a seminar tour. We had at least $14,000 worth of seminars that were booked that were all canceled because of coronavirus. Uh, we actually were at John Danaher's last class that he taught in fucking uh, New York before that shit got shut down. The night before it got shut down, we took Oh, class. shit. And, okay. Uh, so, you know, we have all that footage from before the coronavirus went down, and I don't know if, if we're still going to do anything with all that. So um, for the people who don't know, is it uh, it's like a show, right? So explain a little bit about what you guys got going on. To be honest with you, I don't know what it is right now. It's just me and Pete <laughs> gathering videos, <laughs> taking bong hits. And, you know, with Pete, other. you... You don't know what the heck's gonna happen, right? It's I mean, like, when, is this a BJJ fanatics thing, or is it what is it? Who knows, man? It's like Pornhub. Give me some. Give me. It's give me like something. fucking. He's like the Bronson. <laughs> he's like the Bronson of jujitsu. <laughs> he's like. The yeah, Bronson. yeah. One thing. Uh, one thing. I love. Pete. I love Pete. Like one moment, I'm like, man, I'm I'm cool with Pete. Next, you know, he's arguing with me. I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? I have no idea. I, you, you just don't know what's happening, but. That's him, you know. He's a great, he's a great guy, and um, you know, so I'm excited to see those episodes. Right. And and uh, Bill, what's up with you? You know, I know, I know you've been going through some things, and you know, you, you're doing great now. You know, I see you working out on Instagram. Um, are you making a comeback in the competition scene, or what's new with you? Does it? Yeah, okay. Right, all right, son. all right. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jeez, homie. You gotta get more of an angle, Jeez. lower. Hey, hey, play. Hey. This is the kid. Hey. Here, get some of that. Hey, but on the real though, for third coast, hey, Bill always stepped up against some of the toughest guys. Like he fought fucking uh, Lucas Valente. Just was like, fuck it, yeah, I'll fight him because uh, Lucas had a had a dropout last second. Hottest dude up coming up in the game. Bill's like, fuck it, let's go. You know, and then that match with Vic, y'all had a great match, dude. Like, I'm going to yes. put when, – when Bill, we make the 3CG return, we're going to get somebody good, well matched up so you can so you can come back and y'all can put a show on, bro. No more of these fucking, you know, these hype jobs or none of these guys. Like, let's get out there and, you know, let's get something good and something equal and let's uh, let's see, man. Let's see what happens. I, 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 would like my, I would like my rematch with Lucas. I'll make <laughs> that happen, man. I want my rematch. I don't want that rematch. Yeah, I'm, training just for, I'm, tra I'm training just for him. <laughs> I want revenge of my losses. Hey Jeff, so I was gonna All ask you, man. Like you, you competed at Metamorphs One, so to see that kind of growth from like that was like the first legit like jujitsu like super fight event that had the big production, the big you know kind of the, a model a lot of us follow. So what was that like, Metamorphs One? I mean, you competed on that one, and and how you see other events like the fight to wins and all these other events that are coming up that at our event. Like what? What's the big difference? I mean, is there is other than I mean, we do pay our fighters, and you know that stuff happens. But you know, other well, than that, was, you know, it was nice, man, getting paid the big bucks. You know, I used that money to buy this jacuzzi here <laughs> and this <laughs> property. You know, so just just kind of like I don't know. I have a room 
that I cash, I, I count all my sponsorship money in because <laughs> I get paid in cash. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the Metamorphs thing, it was what it was. The they, fell apart. <laughs> they did their best. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers didn't get paid, and that's not cool. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think, uh, I think uh, Alex yeah, still has the rumor. gets out on that shit. I don't know, dog. But I had a good time. I got paid. I gained a lot of experience. I got to uh, have a match with Kyle and Barrett Yoshida. <laughs> and I did the whole, uh, the whole like, you know, commentate and then jump up and do a match thing, which was That's... so good for my career, man. That that right there got me so much attention. Well, dude, like, I was, I was, was I, like a lot of your Grapplers Quest matches, you love the absolute. So you would be you in there against some big fucking meathead monkey looking motherfucker <laughs> just going in there, taking his back, choking him out. I mean, I just love seeing shit like that, man. Like, so what would it take to get Glover out there? What if we did Glover BTG 2? We'll bring the Japanese money out. We'll bring the pride lady out. She can scream y'all's names and then y'all just throw it down. Let me ask you this. What's the most you've paid somebody to compete for you guys so far? Oh man, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> no, well, I would whatever never... that is, <laughs> plus twelve hundred, and you got me. Twelve hundred bucks. That's it. Plus twelve hundred. Whatever. What was the most you paid somebody? Uh, <laughs> uh, the most we paid out somebody probably twenty G's. So okay, wait, so twenty one thousand so... dollars and Glover's in. So yep. All right, hey. Uh, Eat. We'll get it put in an escrow account, and uh, you know <laughs> it'll be like we'll we'll get some great content film for it. You know it'll be fair, and then. Oh. No, no, that's loyalty, man. I, I, that's fun. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to give you some business advice. You throw that same number at Kyotera and tell him Jeff Glover, Kyotera 3, we'll fill those fucking seats. Every fucking pay per view ticket will be bought and you'll make your money back tenfold. Yeah. Our, our thing is, shots fired. Hey, all no. day, dog. Shots hey. fired. Hey. Shots fired. Shots fired. Took a <laughs> I was taking in water. Wow. <laughs> you know, man, Kyotero, so man. Kyotero out, was out there with Musumeki trying to make these big matches and stuff like that. You think he'd come back for one more with you? If you offered Kyle $21,000 for a match, he would absolutely say yes. Man, I can't do that to that. I wouldn't give him twenty one thousand. He's not, he's not Gordon Ryan. Be, he's no Gordon Ryan. Let's do the math yeah, here. But 21,000 people. You, you got to understand how many people follow Kyotero, people. dog. Kyle Terra has a giant following, bro. Like even with yeah. all the my Simu, the the splits and all that stuff, people still. I mean, he's big down in Brazil, right? Or I mean, yeah. I mean, where's his following mainly based out of? That was before my time, so all the kids real. love him, man. Listen, take my word for it, bro. Kyle Terra has a giant following of people that support everything he does, bro. No matter what, that's real talk. I mean, he he was big big in the 2010s when when the Mendes brothers were coming out. I mean, the whole World Championships. I mean. Kyle was the man at that point. And he, I mean, he is still the man, right? And quick thing, Jeff, uh, my son, you know, the other day he's like, hey, dad, he's seven years old, by the way. He's like, dad, I, I learned a new guard. I'm like, what? What, what? what are you talking about? I'm thinking, what the heck? What the fuck? This dude gets a straight up donkey guard position. I'm like, look, I don't know what the heck you're watching. Like, <laughs> so you got my son trying to do donkey guard, by the way. He saw the match, so. Bro, the, and I was reading something dude. like this. Like, so it's like the it wasn't just to like frustrate people. Like legit, like Gordon Ryan tried to like do halfway don donkey guard and got suplexed for it. But like, yeah. like, like, but like you, like you literally would set up some missions. You have a whole system around it. Like that, I guess it was kind of like they said, kind of the Connie Basami entry, basically. Rear, or, I don't know. I was just, yeah. I was, I, dude. I don't know. It's crazy. I was watching a bunch of donkey guard shit like the past week. So uh, just to see some of the shit you do with that, it, I don't know. So my, my, my question is, uh, Jeff, you, you have the donkey guard. You have the new school uh, American jiu-jitsu guys, technically, right? They're all doing heel hooks. Um, how, how do you see jiu-jitsu, you know, no, or the no-gi game going right now as far as the future, right? Is it continuing with the heel hooks? Is it going to go back to the guard? What do you think? And, you know, and, and quick, Bill, if you can follow talk, Real quick on the donkey guard thing, a lot of that came from all my years training with Cooper and, and all, all the um, – all the training that we did where Frangio encouraged us to experiment and explore and, and look for new techniques, positions, and ideas to, to improve our jiu-jitsu. And, and through all those years of having such a creative person like Bill to be there to help me and guide me and show me and, 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 and throw his input on what I was doing, I was able to come up with shit like Donkey Guard. So awesome. yeah. it's, it's, it's never just like, you know, it's never just like me, dog. I had a dope ass mm -hmm. partner in bill and we had a dope ass mentor in fringia and uh you put that together and it's a formula for beautiful things man 
Uh, what was the other question you asked me? You know, um, so where do you see, like, and, and by like, the way, and by like the way, and, <laughs> and, and you know, by the way, in order for you to be good or any jujitsu practitioner, you have to have that star training partner. You always yep. have to, right? Because you always have that go-to training partner who, at the end of the day, he wants you to become better, right? Because he knows you're the competitor. But don't you, but it's, notice, don't you notice that's how it is in gyms too, you know? It, it is, um, it is. It's, as you look up, as you notice, there's always like two that would, you know, kind of take on the scenes like like look at Compre like Comprito and Lo and La Vera, you know? They were tearing it up, right? And it was always like th those two dudes, it was Terere and Andre Gaval. You know, it was always like is is Hodger yeah, and 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 dude it was yeah, it was like those two it's the stars behind like the show. Two, that pushes you. Yeah, it's always like these two cats that would push you like Gary Tonin and, and, and uh, Gordon, you know, they had each other to push each other. Like, that's... No, that's, that's, that's a good point to another make. Another example. Uh, the Mendez brothers, are. you know what I mean? The, Solo, the and other, like, Solo and Sanji. Solo and Sanji, you know? Samson and Nohara. Yeah. Well, he, he it. Yeah, that's that's crazy, man. Like, it's, it's, it's that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'll have always had uh, you know, somebody good to train with, somebody safely to train with, and up and down as hard as you need to. So, uh, so what's up? How did how did you and Bill meet? I mean, like, yeah, I was reading something that Bill about you know his background about when he was sixteen, but you started, I guess, training when you were thirteen. Did y'all start off training immediately, or what? I mean, how did it come together? Like, what, how? Give us kind of some background on how y'all started, and then you know how how it went from there. I don't want to get into too much of the bad we, stuff. I just want to hear the good times. We, Let them rip. <laughs> we just knew each other around the neighborhood, man. We were we were just skating and biking around all the time. Around, we just you know bumped into each other. Glover was uh, recruiting, man. He was t telling everyone about the fucking beautiful art, sa actually saving people's lives. He loved it as he know. <laughs> My store ass was uh, hanging, hanging out with Justin just at the, at the skate park. <laughs> and uh, he, he told us about it. And my my dumbass first thing said like, which I don't take nothing away from any art. Jujitsu humbled me a lot, but it's funny. The first thing I said was like, "Man, I already did karate." You know? <laughs> I thought he was talking about some karate shit. I was like, "No, man, it's different." I'm like, "All right." So sooner or later, I don't know how I got there, but I ended up showing up, and I was. I was yeah, me and Bill and I, uh, we're, you know, we were on the same same block together. You know what I'm saying? We grew up in the same hood. So we just, I, I, I've seen Bill, Bill's like five years younger than me. So in kid years, five years is a lot of years, dog. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for, so for like sure. when we were little kids, Bill was five years younger than me. He was significantly younger than me. So, you know, I was already like 17 and Bill was 13. And yeah. it, it was like. We, we ran into each other one night. We were both going to get weed from the same guy. And we ran into <laughs> each other at the park. And um, and I was, I was telling Bill, like, yo, jujitsu's dope. You should try it, little guy. You'd be really good. You're a tough little dude, you know? And he was like, ah, oh, that shit don't work. I do karate. And I had to whoop <laughs> his little ass right there like five or six times before oh. he was like, all right, that shit's pretty cool. And then the next day, we took him to Paragon. And, and, and he was there, I mean, the next day. Dog. Bill was there the next day. And he didn't stop yeah. coming. <laughs> that, dude, that, I got a buzz cut from Eduardo. Yeah, they made French. They, 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 they made Bill shave his head and shit. <laughs> so Every cool, match I would see, I see you your fucking head shaved or a mohawk or some I, shit. I gotta think. We gotta think a do a do for doing that. <laughs> I should change my life. <laughs> you know? so, so I mean, oh, that he gave you the jujitsu haircut right when but, you first day. In. Yeah, but Bill's first day, it was like he was 13 years old, you know. Mm -hmm. And by the time yeah. he was like six months into it, he was already like really good in the adult class. <laughs> oh shit! You know so, what I'm saying? Like Frangia didn't have like a kids class for Bill to do. Kind of, he kind of did. I I don't remember it too well now that I think about it. But I remember right from the bat, Bill was in there with the adults, dog, at 14 years old, doing really well. And by the time he was 15, when Bill was 15 and got his purple belt, he was already like arguably besides like Frangia and like. Adam, Bill was like the best dude in the room already. Killer. At, at 15. I, I had I, I had a uh, member, Danny. He he helped me push too. He was a he was sick. Danny Nahara. Another, yeah, yeah. No, uh, Nahara, the other Danny, um, the green belt one, the young kid. Oh, that kid. kid, Danny. Yeah, that's right. We used to get down with that one. He, kid. he used there to was, get there, down with us. Yeah, there was a lot of people that that Bill and I, you know, trained with that came and went through the years. 
You know what I'm saying? But Bill and I were always consistent, dog. We were always consistent with Frangia. And I think a lot of it is because Frangia treated us like fucking shit, like sons. Yeah, yeah. man, that's that, that's good, man, to have those origin stories. Those are, so, Bill, so Bill, you won you, your first, I guess, major title. Was it at Brown Belt when you took Nogi Worlds? Like, what was that like uh, at the time? You're, were, you were, were you the first American to do it? Or was it what? – What's the whole background on that when you when you came up and uh, you had your big run at Brown Belt? Oh, yeah, I remember that. That felt good. That's when the time was, you know, that's when I was getting real, um, spirit, my, you know, more, I guess, spiritual was like, you know, get, I would say I would get more, I was getting more serious into it. And I don't know, it felt good. Um, I, 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 that's when I said, all right, this is me. It was a good I don't know. It was good. I can't explain that. That was a great feeling. Yeah, it, was it was a, a good year, good, man. It was, 2009. It was a good, good year. Yeah. Fucking Limp Biscuit and Jiu Jitsu. That's that fucking 2009. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. No, nah, man. But that, dude, that's cool. fucking, that, I mean, that's just, that, just to hear you guys' story from coming up the way you did. And I mean, what, what's, what was your most shocking win or like biggest upset in your career? I'll ask you, Jeff. Like who's the who's the one that you competed against? Maybe you're the biggest underdog. People were like, ah, no fucking way. Like, well, there was this referee when I fought Bill this one time who gave Bill guard pass points, and it was bullshit, bullshit with the capital yeah. B, my friend. Bill did not pass my guard. <laughs> he landed in side mount for like a second and a half. I recovered back to a quarter, and the referee was like, three points, Bill, because this referee liked Bill. Uh, he probably didn't like you, Jeff. He probably didn't no, like the rep because Bill was friends with this dude. Bill and, <laughs> oh. Bill and this dude would go smoke after the tournaments. Like I'd be like, "Hey, Bill, we're gonna go do our smoking with Paragon," and Bill would be like, "Hold on, son, son, I'm gonna go blaze with this other dude, and then I'll meet you guys there." So Bill would blaze with this guy. So then when I had the match True. with Bill, the guy, the guy was like, as soon as Bill got anything, he was like, "Points for Bill." And then I would get Bill on some shit and hold it for like eight <laughs> seconds, eight seconds, and the dude would be like. Nah. <laughs> See, that's what happens <laughs> when you want to pack it. <laughs> Play, have a good time. He's about to... hey, hey guys, so what? What do? You, where do you think you you see jujitsu going? Uh, the gi game and the no gi game, right? Hey, Dyer, come here real quick. Hey, so I went into this place today. Has hold on, guys. Listen to Dyer for a second. There's uh today. Shout out to BTG. What's up, BTG? What's up? Love you. Love you. All right, go ahead, guys. Sorry. No, but I was uh, saying, like, uh, Bill, what about you? Your biggest upset win? Who was it? Like, the one that you beat and people were like, holy me, me, me. shit. That was an upset. <laughs> the upset. Upset win? Yeah, biggest one. Damn. Uh, the upset oh, win. What about the match with Corona? I still think me. he won that match, dog. Yeah, that one. He was winning, but he wasn't wearing underwear. That one. The top hey, by the way, here. Bill. Um, uh, Bill, are you wearing <laughs> underwear now for competitions? Like, fuck, come on. Are you wearing underwear I mean, right now, Bill? Is the question. Oh shit! <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Damn, you made me look for a second. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he goes, "No, nah, I didn't." <laughs> He's like, yeah, I, don't oh. any, "I don't have any on right now." Uh, yeah, biggest upset, dude. Dyer, can you tell one of the girls to come shake their booties like right here for me in the camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to put some hip hop music in the background. Oh, oh, yeah. shit. So, the few, the net, this, you know what? It was probably the few, few one because he beat me at Brown Belt at, uh, in Brazil. The last year was in Brazil in 07. And then I finally got to go against him in 08. So I was kind of like, yeah, that was like the one because I went to Brazil in 07 and I was in the absolute and I was on my way to the, I was in the semifinals and it was against a few and I did like a single leg shot or something and he yelled out and the, the, the medics came for like a couple minutes and shit. And, he, and it, for you, it was just it, like fumed this whole time too. He just like, he's like spitting out, you know? He's like, what the Tomorrow. fuck, man? It's over a minute and shit. I, I guess there's rules. Like if the, if yeah, you have a medic me. guy, check over a minute or two. Like you're, tomorrow, do it. you're, you have to take like a medical uh, DQ, I guess. I don't know. But long story short, he took the W. I, and, but he was limping as he took the W. We, we, we continued. Uh, he took the W. 
And I waited. We waited. Everyone was done. And there's like a final. The only thing that was going on was the women's finals. Um, absolute Brown. And then the men's Absolute Brown. is Fifu and someone else. So as I'm watching them win, and me and Frigier in the corner, and he just like looks back and you can see, he can see, uh, he see us watching them and he starts to limp back to his lip, you know, like thinking like, he remembers like, I'm watching him. You know, it's funny how, <laughs> how I was like, Motherfucker, he taking my W, you know? That was I was supposed to be the absolute brother in Brazil. I was like, ah, that's my win. So I'm just mad that I'm just staring at him, you know? And then and I'm so happy the next year was when it moved to Cali, when it moved to the United States. So that was cool. And I got to say what up in 08 with him. And then I got my I got my uh my W back. You knee barred him, right? How did you submit him? Oh, that was on top. Uh, with you, I, I like clock choke, like the old basic, you know. Oh, that's right. It was a choke. Was a, that's right. You it was a choke from, yeah. That's crazy so, shit. Man. So you lost matches to both those dudes and got revenge on both of them, basically. I broke my finger on that choke. My finger, I popped, like, I dislocated my, my, uh, my finger on that choke. So that whole, the whole few other rounds after that, I was fucking doing it with a broken, like dislocated uh, fucking finger. It was like size of a golf ball. I yeah. Really by the time that. you got to the finals, <laughs> that finger was fucked, bro. I remember. Bill, it was we, we fucked, we dude. Dog. We were trying to do what we could because Bill was about to go fight Sergio Moraes, right? Oh, shit. That's that year, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 And Bill's Pretty, finger was just put, like, wow, dude. Yeah, dude. It was throbbing. I, mean, I wanted like, to put yeah. props you can take match, dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jerry, so. So did Bill ever oh, get a chance ahead. to actually do? <laughs> Bill, did you ever get to do ADCC? What's no. Bill? Oh, so that's a funny story. Me and Vinny, we had each other's number at the time. I had my dojo in Newberry Park, and I just got done with a class. And he texts me, and he's, "Dude, you get the message? I'm, oh, you get the email? I'm, like, you fucking know I did." So we got a special invitation uh, to the Abu Dhabi. We didn't you know, need to qualify because we had good credentials. You know, we were. Beating the people that that won the qualifiers, we on the radar, tapped them out uh, on the radar, and I we got excited. So a week or two into the training for this, um, I bust. That's when I busted my knee at ACL. I hypered it ninety degrees the opposite way. Yeah, so I was super bummed. I had you know it is what it is. Man, that's tough, man. I mean, talking talking about that, I mean, the knee situation, all the, the struggles and stuff. I mean, both of you guys have, have been publicly on record, you know, talking about, you know, the healing powers of jujitsu and how you're able to, you know, basically channel one addiction into another and how it saved lives. Like, it legit saves lives. I mean, myself personally, at one point, I was, you know, I was as down as it got, man. You know, I was, back to you know, drugs, alcohol, everything, man. I was fucking... 300 plus pounds and then jujitsu got in the picture and it changed my shit. And I was like, I thought at most times I was one of the most hopeless guys out there and to see what it can do. I mean, you guys Nick, give me one of y'all's best stories that you've seen other than your personal stories. I mean, people turning around, people really using jujitsu to like go on to do great things with their lives. So many dogs. Yeah. So well, many. not only just the people that makes it stop like cold Turkey, but at least puts a level on your ass, you know, a little reality check. Cause when you roll, you realize how bad of a shape or shit you're in. You know, you're like, well, all right, I won't drink. I won't drink for a week, man. So, and then you start doing it. You, you're like, oh, whoa, what a benefit. What hey, benefit Bill, but you, you know, a lot of people are going to go through that now when, once we get back to training now, right? Oh. <laughs> We're all going to be out of shape, you know? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, well, I mean, but, yeah, man, that, I mean, it's, I just want to hear you all more talk, talk more about that. Kind of the life saving stuff, you know. People have been through hardcore addiction that use jujitsu to kind of dig to get out of it and and to continue to on to live a good life. I mean, yeah. It's, well, if you have an addicted addiction, uh, you know, a personality, I think that's good because you know jujitsu is a good addiction to have. You know, someone sure. doesn't like maybe losing or just very competitive. If you're competitive, like I don't know, it's like that you're you're craving. It's like a craving you go for, right? When you that high, you're trying to look for that high, and that high is when you get when you win, you feel like feeling of winning, or you know, just after a roll, it feels good. You get that high, so mm -hmm. that's that's one thing jujitsu can give you is a free high. I would get, I would say, mm -hmm. <laughs> a natural high. It gives you a, a yeah. good natural high. Yeah, man, for sure. 
And you know, it's not just about the, uh, you know, it's a natural high, but it's, it's a, you know, you get so many people from different backgrounds training jujitsu, right? You get the, the guy who is the class, you know, no offense, the class nerd, or you have the jock, and then you have the guy who just, he's antisocial, and then he becomes yeah. social, right? Right. I mean, yeah. He gets a confidence, comes back, you yeah. know, yeah. Start kinda, you know, it's, it's legit, man. And like, I've seen it just personally in myself being able to come out of it. So, I mean, that's something that, you know, I, I think people are really underplaying. Like I, I do a lot of, or we've done some work with like the We Five Foundation and some other veterans groups and nothing has worked for some of these guys. They're on the VA meds, they're going to the VA hospital, but then you put them on some jujitsu, man. And it's fucking, it's like, it's like, it's like, it saves, there's, it saves, that's the only thing that works. It's and that's community. Kind of yeah, it, it gives you, it gives you a community, a group of people that you can talk to and be around and shoot the shit with that are all, you know, trying to improve their lives as well. And uh, it's you, another you, better you, group you, of nerds, you know? Yeah, it's a go. group of nerds, and, and, and we start multiplying our nerdiness together, <laughs> and it starts going upward instead of downward, you know. And then we get um, cheated. I don't know where, I, like, like, I don't know who I would be hanging out with if I wasn't <laughs> hanging out with jujitsu people, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the people yeah. I was hanging out with before I was hanging out with jujitsu people, holy <laughs> shit. You, know you wouldn't be in that jacuzzi, Glover would be in that jacuzzi if it wasn't for jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, you know what I'm saying? Like where I'm at right now, I'm with I'm with a Navy SEAL. Like my student Brian, he's a Navy SEAL. You know, he's 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 taking bullets for this country, dog. Mm -hmm. And 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 Fuck, he's, yeah. he's a fucking millionaire. You know, he's got a lot of money, and he lets me come stay at his place and do fucking That's driving right. classes at his house. And it's all because I exchanged jujitsu with him. I gave That's him something awesome. so valuable to his life that I'll always be. A, he'll always treat me like a fucking brother. So he's That's always awesome. got a guest room for me here at his house to come party and fucking jacuzzi and barbecue. And and we're out here. We have a view of. He's got. A, he lives in a house that has a view of the fucking bay. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like Bill said, dog. I would have never met somebody like Brian if it wasn't for jujitsu, dude. You just need the girl in the background doing making a thing, class. making a clap. You know, we're we're, we're online still. So, so. No, nah, but yeah, man. <laughs> So, Bill, what's it been? So, what's it been, man? So, I mean, I know, you know, just competing with us, you've had some ups and downs over that. So, what's up? Are you feeling more up these days? Like, where's your head at? How yes, you? I feel like my my head and body is more. What do you think you he's going to say? No, man, I'm pretty fucking oh. down and out, dog. Bro, uh, I know. I'm, 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 I'm about to end it today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, somebody fucking asked me that, and I'm feeling down and out. What do you feel about about this, that man? time you lost? Oh, that what cliff is looking mighty tempting. That cliff is looking mighty tempting. Right, right we're gonna... Take two. Go. Give him a better question than that. Go. Fuck that. Watch him. I'm not editing that shit. I'm keeping it in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many, how many but if, but if, but if how many girls have I been with? <laughs> hey, how many girls have you slept with in the last 24 hours? Let's oh, edit that part in. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Better? No yes. shit. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one, one one thing I learned about Bill uh, back at 3CG is that this dude knew he knows Spanish. I didn't know that. And so oh, if, you, if you follow him on Instagram, so I'm a big fan of, of both you guys, right? Because coming up, you know, that was at the time when I started jujitsu, when you guys were making a name for yourself. So and, and in my eyes, I mean, you know, you guys, I've always been following you guys, but I was talking to Bill, and um, I remember. I mean, there were a few drinks already going through, right? So I just immediately, <laughs> I just Im I immediately start speaking Spanish. And this dude's like, "Yeah, yeah, porque si tú eres, tú sabes, hey, this and that." And so, uh, yeah, it's man, so people right. didn't <laughs> tequila, <laughs> <laughs> Moscow, orale. Oh, that sounds shit. Like Bill, dog. That's one of the best <laughs> descriptions of Bill I've ever heard. Bro, I, hey, my, my, the my rock, best, the rock came out with some new shit. Ugh. Dude, my best build the grill story was. Shout, we, out, after, shout after, out to after, Dwayne Johnson, my boy. Shout out after, to the rock. After our last hey, event, you guys Bill don't even up. know how much wrestling has impacted Glover and oh, I lives. Like you know, wrestling is the best. Our whole attitude today, as we are. <laughs> you shoot your booty in my face, Glover. Oh yeah. <laughs> what are you drinking there, buddy? <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> No, but Bill, like the, the funny story that me and my partner Zach talk about all the time is after fucking the last last time we competed for us, we end up in the garage till five in the morning doing a footlock seminar. Oh yeah, and you had to get the fucking flight in like an hour or something like after that, and we are was, wasted in my garage just doing fucking ankle lock seminars, rolling with each other. With our, that was with our clothes with our clothes on and shit. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That was fun. Oh man. Yeah. Got dominoes or something that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. 
over there. Shout out to all of. Hey, hey, there we go. There we go. There we go. I saw something. Hold on. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, but I, I thought I saw something. But anyways, uh, I, I'm excited to see. You know, we. I want to get uh, Bill back on Third Coast, but uh, I want to see Jeff. You know, you know, Jeff, get back on there. You know, um, Jeff, where where are you weighing at right now? I'm retired, man. Unless you guys give me that twenty thousand dollars. I've asked me and, me and Jeff have I'm talked kind of, about this. I'm kind of like morally retired. I'm morally retired. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I put enough into the game. Like yeah, I don't you have myself competing that, anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want somebody to be able to bounce their career off of beating me in some super fight. Um, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not there, man. I'm, I'm honestly in a state of my life where I don't train. Um, uh, most right. of my focus is on helping other people, uh, improve their jujitsu or just, right inspiring people with jujitsu and, and and making money and selling dvds and trying to promote my little gym and and all that so uh, so where do you guys train at where, where do you guys train at i i know um i don't train okay well he has a school and, and, they have a paragon school mm -hmm. of, uh down down out their way right we're all over the place i actually my school I, bill and i had a little school called goodland but yeah, goodland, yeah. i don't know that it's going to reopen after this whole fucking thing because we're not paying them any bills. I don't know what's going on. I haven't talked to the owners. We don't know what's up with that. All I know is I can bounce around and teach jujitsu and seminars all over the world. And I'm so damn thankful for that, that Bill, and I, awesome, bro. That Bill right. and I can yeah. do that. And we're so grateful to Frangia and the community for always supporting us and, and being interested in our work and our mm -hmm. and being motivated from our, our, our matches because we put in so much goddamn work when we were young kids, man. You know what I'm saying? From from Bill, Bill from yep. the age that he was 13, worked his little ass off, dog. Instead of going to parties and instead of out kicking it with the kids, Bill was fucking training hard every night at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You know what I'm saying? And you, it was like, you know, no, and I, I don't mean to, to, to cut you off, but I just thought about something right here. It's like I, I kind of feel like a lot of the guys coming up nowadays, they, they don't understand the work that you guys put in, right? Um, you like, know, like, Jiu-Jitsu like, is like, technically. Go ahead. Like, go ahead, Ryan. Like that Daisy Fresh documentary that came out where you guys were Daisy Fresh in it before Daisy Fresh was Daisy Fresh, right? What's that? That, that, that Pedigo uh, uh, submission fighting thing that they've had on a uh, Flow Grappling documentary on the Pedigo submission guys. You haven't seen it? I don't keep up with Flow mm. Grappling, brother. Man, I, I have to. My employers. But they put out a really good documentary on these guys uh, that basically live in the gym. They train in the gym. They, they don't leave it. I mean, it's like bare bones, that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, like old school throwback type training. And uh, they put out a great documentary on it. So, I mean, I guess you guys are kind of, I mean, y'all are sleeping on the match. Y'all are doing all that shit back in the day, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's partying on, cleaning the mats, partying on the mats, sleeping on the mat, <laughs> Fucking on the mats. <laughs> Everything on the mat, man. Uh, we're going to write a book. Get it. Yeah. You definitely need to, man. I want to write a book, dog, you know, because because Bill and I have so many, like, stories that need to be told, dude, that, like, I always forget when people are like, oh, tell me a cool Bill story. And I'm like, um, um, what's a cool Bill story? And I forget. And then later I'll remember, like, five of them will come up. And I'll remember, I'm like, dude, somebody's going yeah. to hear this fucking story, yeah. dog. Well, yeah, so <laughs> you know, when the first time we were having uh, Bill out, I, I remember hitting Seth Daniels up. And uh, he was like, all right, Bill's the best guy in the world. But you have to do certain things a certain way. And he's like, you got to do this. And then he goes, but if you're, you're good. And, it, man, it, I, I'm telling you, Bill has been, like, probably my favorite guy to have on the show. No bullshit. It's always fun. It's always a good time. It's always good energy. Everybody's asking him, when is he coming back? Like, win or loss. Like, he comes out with a smile on his face. Like, dude, like, keep fucking grinding. Keep getting back in shape. We want to have you back out. Put some money in your pocket. We miss oh, you yeah. out here. You know what I'm saying, dude? Always been a big fan. So, uh, just, just keep it up, bro. Like, it's, it's been a lot of fun. But uh, we, we appreciate you guys coming out and having it and, you know, taking an hour out to uh, chop it up with us. And we'll, uh, we'll stay in touch, man. Of course, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, anytime, Ryan. Mad respect. Right on, dude. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Can I do a quick shout out? Yes, sir. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yo, shout out to Frangia, Bill and I's master. None of this would have been possible without him. Yep. And uh, shout out to um, Scotty Nelson and BJJ Fanatic DVDs. Check them out. Peace. Right on. That's you, what's got, up. you got anybody, Bill? Are you good? Yep. Tyrone, Adam, and uh, Frangia, <laughs> and Jeff Glover. I love it when he's this time. And Lalo Salazar. <laughs> right on, Tyrone. right on. T Money. I got to thank my T Money, man. Shout out to T Money. People don't talk about Tyrone the enough. First black belt. T Dog. T Dog. First one, baby. First one. <laughs>
All right, Bill. Well, stay in shape, bro. Well, I'll, I'll reach out soon. We'll get something on the books. He's getting jacked, man. He's getting jacked. You're going to be ultra heavy. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, Jeff's on the <laughs> What's up, dude? Hey, I can get some tattoos. I look big too. Watch. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, peace, boys. All right, dude. Talk to y'all later. Take care. Yeah.